it would seem that the summer of laughably horrible Christian cinematic debacles has given way to the autumn of laughably horrible Christian cinematic debacles, and leading the way is early Razzie frontrunner Left Behind, in which the 11 executive producers embezzled $14.99 million and used the remaining ten grand to make a movie. The film stars a drugged and likely blackmailed Nicolas Cage who phones in an airline pilot who's halfway across the Atlantic when suddenly half his crew and passengers are raptured away in prelude to the end times. Joining me to discuss this award-eligible film is my good friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, welcome back to the show. Oh, no, thank you for having me. We always meet under the worst of circumstances. I know. We got to call. We got to talk sometime just to just to chat. We're right. Always, we're always like, hey, how you been? Oh, this fucking thing. <laughs> Oh my, there was no aspect of this movie that wasn't a failure. It's no, cinematography, no. score, script, acting, set direction, makeup, hairdressing, fucking catering. Even the opening logo looked cheap in this movie. Yeah, because the first, you see the logo and then it pans to the book that says Acts of God. And this woman like fingers her cross a little and then she picks it up. She pays for it and she sort of smiles at the camera like, I'm the Christian. And you and I wrote, this movie has been on for four seconds. It's already heavy-handed. Right? <laughs> the, now, the first thing I wrote down was what 1980s video game cutscene did they harvest this music from? That's, the, it, it opens like a romantic comedy. It, the whole movie, the plot opens like a romantic comedy that someone went insane during. It's like... It's like a 1990s liar, liar, but halfway through, the writer's wife and kid died in a car crash. <laughs> so he's like, and then everybody gets raptured and takes <laughs> But let's talk about, Nicolas Cage looks like a witch brought his Madame Dussauds uh, <laughs> to life. They, who trained that ferret to stay on his head the whole time? It was so, and he looks sad. He looks tired. You can see him checking cue cards off camera. Is, there's everything except like a guy just wandering into shot with like a corner of the card and being like, I love you, honey. <laughs> so this is now a trend because we've seen a bunch of these movies and I need to help understand for myself. 39 seconds into the movie because I have a little timer on. So I'm just like, boom. Problem of evil comes up. The Christian yep. lady walks over and she's like, excuse me, Buck, are you Christian? And the girl walks over and she's like, how come your God's such a piece of shit? And the movie never answers the no, question. No, they don't even try. You mentioned um, already uh, Buck, uh, who just walks around using his porn name in regular life, apparently. So, so, And, and that's, I guess, really where the movie starts. We, we have Chloe. And they fall in love because they have spoken for 48 seconds. Right, right. But I want to, this, this is another moment though. I wrote down that I said, this script was written by someone who knew a lot about the Bible and had no idea how human beings talk to each other. There's so many moments of dialogue where she sits down and she's like, you ran away. And he's like, you thought I ran away. And she's like, no, you ran, you, I thought you ran away. And he's like, <laughs> you thought that I, the characters get confused. The characters inside the movie are like, I don't know what's coming out of my mouth. <laughs> The other thing is they they dance around the mom's religion in their conversation in the most insane of ways. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, man, you know, um, you know, mom's sort of doing her thing, still doing that, huh? It's like meth is mom on meth. <laughs> I put this down as well because I think it's really important. This movie is, and you mentioned this already, is staged like an eighth grade play. Yes. And the, and the best example of this is when she sits down in the Starbucks and she's sad after her dad leaves. And we see that Buck is sitting behind her. The camera literally is like, oh, fuck that shit. Get him in the shot. Get him in the shot. And it just, like, <laughs> it just pans over and it's like, pull out, pull out, pull out. It's just like, no one was like, hey, yeah, you know what? That's fine. It's good. Got, all the words were on the screen. And the movie is filled like that. The, oh, the the script on this was so bad, and even like I, you, the source material obviously was pretty ridiculous too. I, you and you need look no further than the names. The fucking Nick Cage's character has the strange Lovian moniker of Rayford Steele. It's nuts. All the characters' names in this movie are like some like a drunk guy who's been pulled over without a license or registration, <laughs> making up something for the cops. Oh, Buck you Williams. tap on my window and go, "What's your name, sir?" Raymond Blumfimpf. <laughs> oh, my name's Chloe. My name is Chloe Clinton. Sorry, what's your name? Clinton. Chloe. My name's Buck. My friends call me Buck. What? 
Nobody calls you fucking Buck. So now, and, 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 and this is very important to the plot, so let's not leave it out. When uh, when Rayford gets on the plane and Chloe's talking to Buck afterwards, a guy shows up and he's got you two tickets for for Nick Cage. And he's like, oh, here, you're Nick Cage's daughter. Can you because it's New York City. So everybody knows everybody. Can you sure. give um, your dad these you two tickets? Uh, so, so apparently he's trying to take Busty McPoppin tits to the um, to the U2 concert. And I just want to say nobody's been laid for you two tickets since 1994 at the latest. Yeah, no so, one in this movie has ever had an affair. And, th- and that is brilliantly clear by that moment where they're like, I don't know, what do you do when you're cheating on your wife? I don't know, probably go see some <laughs> devil music like Bono. Bono, right? That's devil music. <laughs> so, and then we're getting on the plane here, and this plane has more racial stereotypes than the bus in speed. It's the most amazing thing in the world. And here's the one great thing. I, I can go on forever and ever about Vern Troyer. Cause I could, I could spend nine hours talking about Vern Troyer. Cause when he appears on screen, I go, Vern Troyer, what? I feel insane. Now, who is, who is Vern Troyer? Fill That's me the midget. Oh, okay. That's the little person. The, the angry midget who is angry because he's a midget. And according to the audience in the theater that I saw it, um, he, that is fucking hol- every, hilarious. Every angry midget joke. They went back to the angry midget joke well 3,000 times in this movie. And every time the audience just ate it up with a spoon. A quarter of my notes are the test audience must have – the sole feedback they must have gotten for this movie was more midget jokes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we awful. Or midget jokes. And then you've got this Muslim guy who is clearly in the movie for no purpose but to be a really nice guy and not go to heaven because he's a Muslim. Yep. But here's the spinoff I want to see because the tension throughout the movie is between the midget and the Muslim. Uh-huh. That's a buddy comedy that I want to watch. <laughs> midget and Muslim in the post-apocalyptic <laughs> wasteland. <laughs> Demons taking down the Antichrist. I didn't give a shit about any of the other characters, but he puts him in a little papoose. You know, like, <laughs> he he in, gives him a machine like gun. Chewbacca was C three PO on his back. Oh. <laughs> I watched six movies of that shit. All right, so now we're going back and forth between the plane and and Chloe and Chloe. She can't stand her mom, so she she takes off and she goes to the the mall, and her brother Skippy goes with her. So they're walking around talking about the plot. Do you think mom talks about God too much? I think mom talks about God too much. When all of a sudden we're we're mid I love you sis hug and the rapture happens amidst Kids some fucking weird vaporizes. Well so there's there's a couple of things to point out about this. The first is and the most important is that apparently everyone on earth when someone vanishes looks for them in their empty clothes. Right. <laughs> Everyone, every single human they walk by is like, did you just shrink? Where are you, Timmy? <laughs> we thought you was a horny toad. We, and, and Okay, so we haven't talked about the director here, Vic Armstrong, who is apparently a stuntman. And his way of portraying chaos in a movie is just in the background of every scene, whether it makes any sense or not, there are people running around screaming. Yeah, no, I wrote, I wrote, people vanished. Rape! <laughs> That's obviously what the what the writers of this movie thought would happen. Apparently, people will forget how traffic works without all the liars. <laughs> right. The main problem with this movie is this movie deeply supposes that the moment the ten percent or whatever of the world's population like pops away, everyone else will go fucking bananas. Do you know what would happen if all the Christians in my life disappeared? <laughs> Nothing. I would finish right. this goddamn sentence. <laughs> and they show, I don't want to skip ahead, but at the end of the movie, New York is in flames. Right, right, New exactly. Is, New York is burning to the, New York is cinders <laughs> because the three people right. in New York who don't believe in Jesus were apparently operating the don't blow up. The <laughs> well, and then you get the same thing with the airplane. Uh, which okay, so uh, we're back up on the airplane with Nick Cage, and his, he's he's flirting with with Busty, and the co-pilot gets bamfed away, and apparently he had the plane set to careen wildly out of control as soon as I'm not touching anything. Right? Yeah. No. He he had he had everything goes bad shit, and then 
So he finally gets the plane back to normal, and everyone's like, oh, let's go up. I want to talk to the pilot. And he hits the smother the plane switch. <laughs> right. Well, and what's the mentality here that all the passengers suddenly, a bunch of kids disappear, but their solution here is let's grab our pitchforks and torches and go get that captain. What What the I hell? they expected to open the door and just all the babies are up front with Nicolas Cage <laughs> just sitting on his lap and he's like, it's not what you think. <laughs> I had a really hard time after Season of the Witch. <laughs> Boy, didn't he. Oh, which, which reminds me, apparently all the air traffic controllers in the world are Christians. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, everybody's reaction in this movie was completely insane. Like like Chloe, she she's hugging her brother when he disappears out of his clothes. And her first thought is, well, maybe he snuck out of his clothes mid-hug and went to the hospital with all the other naked children from the mall. So yeah, that's went where to she... the hospital to the maternity ward. Yes. Like you do. If I had a nickel, listen, I have a baby sister. <laughs> she just turned 12. And let me tell you, if I had a nickel for every time she took off all her clothes and snuck into the locked maternity ward at my <laughs> local hospital, I'd be a rich man. It's ins- it's and nuts. what the fuck is it with all the kids going to have that, that, like, that is so unbiblical? You know, the, the whole the whole religion rests on the idea that these kids are sinners, especially the ones in the maternity ward that hadn't been baptized yet. Yeah, and this is this is the thing that I became obsessed with while I was trying not to pay attention to this movie. Is there a cutoff age for kids? So all the kids are gone, but was there a kid who, like, blew out his candles and then, fuck, he missed the deadline because everyone got raptured right after <laughs> Like, 12 years old and 13 days, fuck you, you're staying on Earth with the demons and the ass rapes. <laughs> Second thing about the hospital. So she goes to the baby ward. She sees the babies are all missing. And she's like, well, no babies in here. She turns. And then this woman who's standing behind the curtain just like pulls it back and is like, they're all gone. Which means that woman was waiting behind the curtain. Right. <laughs> she's like, oh, someone's coming. You know what? I'll, you know what? I want to make this real. I'm going to stand behind the curtain and I'll wait for her to see. And then I'll, I'll just pull it back. And she'll be like, oh. And I'll be like, ah. And I'll be crazy. Tell you my wisdom. <laughs> So, and then, like, somehow, the the people making this movie, they seem to think that this was going to be a whodunit for a certain point, because we get to this big reveal, where they reveal in movie, dun, 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 it was God, and the movie acts like we didn't know this yeah. until then. I feel then. like that was a Nicolas Cage suggestion. He was like, have you guys seen National Treasure? And they're like, yeah, Nick, we've seen that. <laughs> okay, well, I want to do that. But I want to do it instead of it's Benjamin Franklin, it's God. I want to know. <laughs> I want to figure it out that it's God. So there's a, another plane coming where apparently both of the pilots were good Christians, and it's just careening off to its death over the Atlantic. And Nick Cage sees it coming, but his first instinct is to play chicken. That's an insane mo- – because he knows people have disappeared. He knows pilots have disappeared. Right. And he's still like, C-1857, you're headed right for me. And uh, it's like, you know I can what? definitely move. You start to pull up and then radio. <laughs> right. <laughs> then he lies about how planes land. He's like, I can't, I can't pull up, so I, that's why I can't land it in the water because the plane will just turn into dust. If I try and land in the water plane, I'll just explode instantly. And I'm like, wait, you can level it out and land it on the ground, but the water's too much for you? Yeah, because I would have to. Shut up. You're not my real dad. (laughs) Have you seen Wicker Man? (laughs) I got eaten by bees. Uh, So So finally they get in touch with Chloe, and and, and she decides she's the best. She tells her dad there's a highway that's under construction where you can land the plane it's right by the mall she actually says that it's by the mall this yeah, is it's by New the mall York fucking city yes oh the mall yes i get it oh the mall yeah <laughs> just let me land a plane on that unconstructed roadway <laughs> right also there's a weird clap moment like i feel like that wasn't cor- i feel like the extras weren't hadn't read the script because it was like so we're going to be landing soon yay wait no no wait that's <laughs> not what i meant i meant we're all gonna die <laughs> right but please enjoy Moonstruck. We managed to get that working on the in-flight movie. You guys remember when I was good? Huh? Let's have some fun. Look how handsome I was. So they land the plane, and oh, gee, but they don't have flaps now. So can they slow it down because there's a truck full of flammable gas right at the end of the runway? Can it slow? And it does slow down. Yeah. There's a lot of people don't know this, but Wiley Coyote stores all his explosive buttons in a circle around every 
in construction roadway. Absolutely. Apparently, because once the plane is safely landed, Chloe goes running up to it, and in the background, shit's just exploding for just, no goddamn reason. Just because the plane wing hit it. So oh, it's right, like, <laughs> right, and things explode when they're hit. I keep forgetting. <laughs> So, you forgot every time you touch something. That's why you can't ever. That's why they wear pads in football, so the guys don't just burst into flame. <laughs> so kill now everybody. They're, they're getting out of the plane, and and the midget falls down. So it's hilarious. It's pushed by the Muslim. I'm telling you that buddy cop, that <laughs> buddy movie. I would it's watch a that. Dollar franchise. <laughs> Muslim and a midget. This week, this, you make it a show. I wasn't Fox. sold until you mentioned the papoose. When you mentioned the papoose, I'm, I'm, I'm totally in. Mm-hmm. So my question coming out of this, I had a lot of questions, but my main question is, who the fuck was this movie for? Yes, it's ham-handed, and there's a lot of Bible references and God references, but it doesn't have like a message, like a Christian message behind it. There's no like all the Christians in the movie are are fucking lunatics. So who was the intended audience? Even the Christian Post trashed this piece of festering monkey shit. So it, who do you think they were making this for? I'll tell you exactly who this movie's for. This movie is is for every stepdad who just lost a fight with his atheist son. He's like, I just want some evidence. You know, there's already fucking evidence. And then he storms out of the house. He gets in his shitty pickup truck and he goes to the movie and he just sits there in the movie and he's like, yeah, fucking. <laughs> and, then it, and then I'm going to disappear and he's going to be stuck in a plane with fucking Tits McGee and everybody's going to, Mary's going to miss me. And everybody's just going to start raping each other and jewelry store owners are just going to come up with shotguns in the middle of Manhattan and kill a black guy and then. And then, and then they're gonna wish I was there. <laughs> Nuts! This is exactly what this this was movie was the evangelical version of a six year old going. I'm gonna run away, and when I do, they'll appreciate all the stuff that I did. They'll miss me. Because what would we what would we possibly do without all the Christians? How would we hand? Oh no! What if all the all the people who were holding back our progress and hundred trillion dollars worth of tax money? Whatever would we do? And I've, I've said this before, but you know, if there are fiery unicorns, we've got RPGs, and now all the smart people in the world are in charge. I'm betting on us. Oh yeah, but Andrew Gabriel's got a winged sword. Yeah, I got a Black Hawk helicopter. And there you I go. Think the Bronze Age saw that shit coming. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it was great. So, uh, Eli, I think I speak on behalf of the entire audience when I say thank you for once again taking one for the team. Oh, thanks for having me, Noah.